This is a three year investment from Agri Futures and I'm standing in front of the trial for SA. This is in its second year. As it's a national project, we have trials around Australia as well. So there's a trial being managed over in WA at Muresk by Georgie Troop and she works for DPIRD. There's also one that's being managed by the Birchip Cropping Group in Victoria and one that's being managed in New South Wales at Yanko by DPI there. As part of the project, there's also some work on PGR use and whether that's going to be something that's uh, beneficial for hay growers. And this is really an export hay focus. The trial behind me has nine different oat varieties ranging in different maturity groups from Durac, which is a very fast developing variety, through to Vass, which is the slowest developing variety. Uh, we do have Brasha here, which has performed very well, as well as Mulgara, Winteroo, Yalara, Carolup, which is a WA variety, Williams, which is also one that's grown a bit more in, in WA. So what we are trying to do with this project is have a look a bit about sowing date and also about the nitrogen management. And we've actually picked three of the varieties, Mulgara, Winteroo and Yalara, which have an extended nitrogen response curve from just the seeding N, um, equivalent to about 10 to 14 units of N through to 150. So quite high just to see how they might perform. This trial here, we did two times of sowing. The first was on the 6th of May and the second was on the 25th of May. And we've applied five rates of nitrogen total. So we've done a, an N deficient plot at 10 kilos of nitrogen per hectare, 30, 60, 90, 120 and 150. Those last two being enriched plots. Just a bit about the season at heart. We had a pretty good start to the year. We had a lot of summer rainfall, just under 100 millimetres falling from January through to March. Growing season started off well. We had about 60 millimetres in April. As the year progressed, rainfall petered out quite a lot. We had a June, July combined rainfall of 40 millimetres. August provided us with some relief and we had about 60 millimetres uh, falling in August. And we had another 45 falling in September, but about half of this fell at the very end of the month. So what we found was that the plants became quite water stressed and end stressed uh, throughout the season. We found that they also rapidly progressed through their growth stages, um, which would be the case for most people in this region. We began cutting our oats on the 7th of September, which was Durac, as you'd expect. And we were completed all of our cuts um, across both times of sowing by the 24th of September. Generally, Durac was a week ahead of the other varieties and Vass was only a few days behind, which was a bit unexpected. In terms of yield, we found that Brusher was, I guess, the overall winner at 3.5 tonnes to the hectare. It was followed closely by Carolup, Yulara and Winteroo. As you would probably guess, Vass was our lowest yielding at 2.6 tonnes to the hectare. In terms of the effect of time of sowing, we found that when we analysed the data spatially, there was a significant effect of time of sowing on hay yield. Nitrogen response, as you'd probably guess in a dry year, the only rate that really showed any significant effects, the end efficient plot, 10 kilos of nitrogen to the hectare, performed quite badly. Between that and 30 kilos to the hectare, there was a significant difference, but as you increased your nitrogen rate from 30 kilos, to 60 to 90, etc. We saw no yield benefit. We also looked at NDVI to look at nitrogen response to measure leaf greenness, essentially. Again, there were significant differences between the 10 and 30 kilo rates, the 30 and 60 kilo rates, but above 60 kilos of nitrogen to the hectare, there were no significant responses. The last thing that we looked at was plant height. And again, Brusha was our tallest on average about 65 centimetres. We we also had Winteroo about 60 centimetres in height and our two shortest were Vass at about 45 centimetres on average and Williams was quite small as well, about 46 centimetres on average. Last year the yields were actually fairly similar to here in the same sort of trends. So you had a, an effect from time of sowing 
but you also did have a bit of difference between some of the varieties in their hay quality. But overall, the site here was very good for hay quality, uh, which also isn't surprising in, in quite a dry year. So we had sort of low neutral detergent fiber NDF, and we had quite high water soluble carbohydrates. And the reason we had sort of lower, or we had fiber that was um, quite good is because they weren't very tall. We had quite thin stems and, and that's sort of to be expected. Where you really start to see that decrease in your hay quality is when you start to really push those yields. We saw that at some of our other sites last year. So although this is the National Hay Agronomy Projects just here, I also have a trial at Lamaru in the Mallee and one at Tali in the Mid-North, at the Mid-North High Rainfall Zone site. And we have all of these varieties there. And so we're actually able to see how they performed in better conditions. And what we found was at the Tali site, as you're starting to push those yields higher from earlier sowing, you're increasing your fiber content, you're increasing your stem thickness. And this year as well, we actually increased our lodging quite a bit from earlier sowing. And that's not surprising, the plants were much taller um, and there were more susceptible varieties than others. Winteroo in particular was falling over in all of our plots, even from later sowing as we got that rain. We almost got some lodging at Lamaru, which I was quite surprised about, but that's because it managed to pick up every rain front that went through the Mallee, went through Lamaru. From our early sowing at Lamaru, it was actually a bit earlier than here. We sowed 20th of April. We got hay yields of 8.2 tonnes, and that's with us cutting at 15 centimetres, so beer can height. When you take it to the ground, you're increasing your yields by almost two tonne. So there's a lot of biomass that we were getting at Lamaru, much higher than what we got here. And I suppose the other thing that was quite different from Lamaru entirely to here is that we had a lot more spread in our flowering data when they flowered, when we cut them. And that's because we actually had that rain falling at a good time and more consistent rain, so they weren't so stressed. While here, VAS did not perform well because of the dry conditions. At Lamaru and Tali, the longer season was able to pick up on that rainfall and was one of the highest yielding. It was also really just about the timing of that rainfall because when I went out to the Lamaru field day, those later developing varieties were starting to hit the wall and then the rain came through and they pushed up. It's, I suppose, hard to to pick a favourite variety um, from that because you've got such different environments everywhere. So I do have two trials uh, which have, I suppose, different things that we're looking at. One, we have a PGR, so MODIS, looking at decreasing lodging. And we also have a grazing treatment in there and that was done at, at Tali but the one that you're referring to will be our gibberellic acid trials. So uh, this year we put three different trials in around the state, one at Tali, one at Lamaru, and one up at Bullaroo. And we've got three varieties there, Brusher, Mulgara, and Williams. And we chose those because in the glass house we had different responses, they had different responses to gibberellic acid. So we thought, look, we'll see if it's gonna work. We applied it either at early stem elongation or at flag leaf emergence. And uh, then we cut it um, at watery ripe. It was a little bit later um, just because of logistics. And we want to look at whether the panicle is actually getting pushed out of the boot more. At the moment, we have not finished all of those measurements. Uh, we did get an increase in overall plant height to gibberellic acid application. We didn't get any differences in yield. All we picked up was that Williams was lower yielding than Brusher and Mulgara. How they're pushing up more, whether it's actually the panicles pushing up more, or whether it's just an overall height, I'm not quite sure yet. Having said that, all three of those sites yielded the same, which is really quite interesting. So Brusher yielded between 9.1 and 9.3 tonnes at Bulleroo, Lamaru and at Tali. Mulgara 9.1 and then Williams between 8 and 8.4. P 
Potentially it could. Um, I don't know whether the hay is just too variable for it to pick up small differences like that. Um, we will be doing quality data on it, so I'll be able to tell you that once everything's been run. There are also two trials on GA over in WA and they've had a very different season to what we have had here. So I'm hoping that they might have actually had some panicles stuck and we might actually be able to get some more data where it's, you know, in the right season. So I just want to touch on quickly Kingbale Oats. It's a single gene, immutolerant oat and hay variety developed by GIA, Grains of Innovation Australia, and us at Integrain are commercialising it. So it's a winteroo type, agronomically very similar. The results have been almost identical to winteroo the last two years. Tall, mid-maturity, we expect to be CCN resistant. Leaf rust will need to be managed, um, but yeah, expect it to perform very similar to winteroo. The IMI tolerance to it, so it will only be registered for century IBS. That's for two reasons. First of all, uh, MRLs. MRLs for IMIs in hay are zero. So by doing the IBS uh, up front, gives the plant long enough to get rid of any residues. And secondly, because it will reduce your biomass. If any IMIs over the top, will reduce your biomass pretty significantly uh, and also increase your MRL issues. So uh, pending the registration of Century with New Farm uh, through the APVMA due in March, that will be available for growing next year. Uh, C at the moment is okay for availability, uh, expected to get fairly tight.